Alright, so recently I've been getting a lot of questions about part 2 of the 350 million download celebration and even though we still got quite a bit of time before it officially starts, in today's video I want to give you guys a quick breakdown of everything that we know so far that's coming for part 2 of this celebration to I guess get you guys a little bit more prepared. Now before we jump into it, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video Madara Accounts. They are an online store for stacked global and JP token accounts with thousands of stones and lots of great units for very reasonable prices. So if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, then feel free to go check out their website in my description down below. And if you see something you like, you can use my discount code TIGER for 20% off your entire purchase. That's Madara Accounts. Go check them out. And so with that said, let's jump right into it. So I guess the first and most important question would be, when is part two actually starting? And I think the easiest way to answer that question is just to take a quick look at how things went down for last year's download slash worldwide celebration. So let's pop over there. As you can see, this was the uh, worldwide celebration for Vegito and Bootanks and Part 1 started on August 27th, and Part 2 started on, let's see, September 14th. So this year, the Worldwide Celebration, or 350 million download celebration, started a little bit earlier on, I believe, the 25th, but let me just quickly check here. Uh, yeah, August 25th, which means that if we keep the same timeline from last year, then Part 2 should be starting on September 12th and right now it's September 2nd so we got about 10 days to go before part 2 starts. Once again I can't say for sure but it should be somewhere around September 12th at the very least. Okay so that answers the first question and from here let's take a look at some of the events that we know for a fact are coming like the Extreme Z Awakening slash Extreme Z Battle or the AGL Transforming Goku we also are going to be getting Extreme Z Awakenings for the remaining members of the Free-to-Play Ginyu Force. That would be the Int Ginyu, the AGL Birder, and also the STR Chase. Now we don't have these guys' details yet, but we will go over the uh, Goku Extreme Z Awakening in a second. And we're also most likely going to be getting a Token Awakening for the Tex Arbon, and also an Extreme Z Awakening for him, along with another Extreme Z Awakening for the Fizz Goku from the 3rd anniversary, who recently became available again through one of the new story events, right? So in total, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 Extreme Z Awakenings, at least, that we can expect in part 2 of the celebration, possibly with uh, more on the way, because I have heard some people speculate that we'll be getting an LR Extreme Z Awakening 2, maybe for the STR Full Power Frieza, or the Fizz LR Bardock, or something like that, but I'm not going to speculate too much on that right now, although of course, I do hope it happens. Um, so before we get into some of the confirmed events that are coming for Part 2, let's quickly go over the AGL Transform Goku's Extreme Z Awakening details. So starting with the Super Saiyan Goku, his leader skill will become Super Class Key Plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 100, and 30% super attack raises attack and defense and causes immense damage and lowers defense and then passive is attack and defense plus 110% key plus 3 plus an additional attack plus 10% and defense plus 40% when attacking extreme class enemies reduces damage received by 21% and transforms when conditions are met. Now for Super Saiyan 2 Goku, super attack raises attack and defense, immense damage and lowers defense and passive is attack and defense plus 120%, key plus 3, plus an additional attack plus 20%, and defense plus 30%, when attacking extreme class enemies, reduces damage received by 22%, transforms when conditions are met. Super Saiyan 3 Goku, super attack, raises attack and defense, immense damage, lowers defense, passive attack and defense plus 130%, key plus 3, plus an additional attack plus 30%, and defense plus 20%, when attacking extreme class enemies, reduces damage received by 23% and transforms when conditions are met. Then we have Super Saiyan God Goku. Super attack raises attack and defense, causes immense damage, 
and lowers defense, and passive is attack and defense plus 140%, he plus 3, plus an additional attack plus 40%, and defense plus 10% when attacking extreme class enemies, reduces damage received by 24%, and transforms when conditions are met. And finally, we have the Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Uh, super attack raises attack and defense for one turn, causes immense damage, with a great chance of stunning the enemy, and passive is attack and defense plus 150%, E plus 3, plus an additional attack plus 50% when attacking extreme class enemies, reduces damage received by 25%, E plus 12, and performs a guaranteed critical once only. So, uh, as you can see, he's very similar to the attack transforming Frieza, except for the fact that instead of healing, he's getting more damage reduction, and overall, I think in terms of performance, it's probably also going to be kind of similar. Although, I think I might like the Goku better because I do prefer uh, more tanking or damage reduction over healing. But of course, they're both amazing units, so I can't wait for this Extreme Z Awakening as well in Part 2. And taking a quick look at his stats, now before the EZA, his max HP was 15,205, attack was 16,978, and defense was 10,750. Now with the Extreme Z Awakening, those numbers go up to 18,782 HP, 21,018 attack, and 12,554 defense, which uh, is just insane. You know, like I said before with the Frieza, these are basically LR numbers, and that's why both these units are going to be so good, right? So. There you go, that is the Transforming Goku EZA, and once again, we don't have the details for these guys yet, but I'm going to assume that they will be very good, uh, at least for free-to-play units, once they get their Extreme Z Awakenings. Now, from there, we have a few events that have been confirmed through the B-Jump leak from last month, as well as the uh, Toka Now program from about a week ago, right? So... Uh, starting with the B-Jump leak here, two out of the three things revealed have already happened. So we got the uh, Guinea Force Extreme Z Awakening at the bottom here, as well as the new um, Epic Battles... I forgot the name, but the new challenge event. But this one right here, the Bulma's Dangerous House Sitting, which is basically a replacement for the launch event, has not happened yet. So that is definitely expected for part two, where we can get 10 stones. For every clear, I'm assuming up to a maximum of like 70 to 100 stones. So just a lot of free-to-play stones coming for this event right there. And that pretty much does it for the V-Jump. So let's jump over to the Dokkan Now stuff. All right, so the Dokkan Now program revealed two pieces of uh, information. The first thing is that there will once again be a global versus JP campaign in part two, where the two sides have to compete to see who can... Uh, spend the most stamina, or run the most events, or recruit the most characters, and so on and so forth. And then the winning side will be receiving this really dope looking Bardock, and the losing side will be getting this Frieza. Now, honestly, I wouldn't mind either one, because I feel like the art for both is uh, really nice. But, of course, if I had a choice, I would like to get the Bardock, because... He's one of my favorite characters. There are also less Bardock units in the game compared to Frieza's, and his art just looks better, you know? So basically, what I'm trying to say is uh, global players that are watching right now, let's try this time, all right? Let's beat JP and get this Bardock. I know we can do it. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing that was revealed was this astonishing power-up Grand Elder Guru's Guidance growth event that can be completed once per day. And apparently it allows you to level up your Link skills easily. Now we don't know exactly what that means. I don't know if it's like a guaranteed level up for every single unit you bring into the event or if it's just an increased chance. So maybe instead of like, you know, a 3% chance to go from level 9 to level 10, it's now a 30% chance, so even though it's more likely, it's still not guaranteed. I'm hoping that it is a guaranteed level up because I know a lot of us have units that are like so close to being maxed out, but there's just that one link that's being super stubborn and refuses to increase. So I'm really hoping this event will 
help with that situation, but for now, I'm not gonna let myself get too excited because there's always a chance that the event is not nearly as good as uh, we would like, right? But that's coming as well, so these were the two major reveals from the Dokkan Now program. And finally, the last thing that we know for a fact is coming for part two of the celebration is a new stage for the collection of Epic Battles event where instead of fighting the good guys like uh, Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, and so on and so forth in the first stage, this time we'll be fighting the bad guys like Frieza, Zarabond, Doria, Ginyu, and so on and so forth. So uh, there you go guys, that is basically everything that we know is coming for part two. There's already a lot of stuff that's been revealed, but I assume there will be still a few more things on the way that we don't currently know about yet. Like for example, we know that there's gonna be a part two LR banner, but we have no idea what the part two LR is actually gonna be. I'm assuming it's gonna be a Namek Saga Dirty Fireworks Vegeta, which we only have one of in the game right now, and it's that 50% support. But there's always a chance that it's something else, like maybe LR Bardock, or LR Gohan and Krillin, or even an LR Ginyu Force. So uh, it's all up in the air right now. Let me know in the comments down below which one you guys would prefer, or if you have another prediction that I haven't mentioned, definitely let us know in the comments. Um, oh, also, the trend for the past couple of years is that they've been giving these older LRs super attack revamps. Like two years ago, it was the Int LR Gohan. Last year, it was for Majin Vegeta. So this year, I'm hoping that if we don't get a new LR Bardock, then at the very least, they'll revamp the uh, Fizz LR Bardock's animations because they're not my favorite at the moment. So there you go, guys. That is today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found it at least somewhat interesting. And as always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. To join the Tiger Squad now, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here until next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.